Today, I'm going to talk about my three favorite landscape photography lenses. So in various videos you've seen me out, we're using different lenses, anything from the 14 to 30 lens to the 24 to 200. I've even done some comparisons between the 2470 and the 24 200 from Nikon. Well, in today's video, we're going to take a look at each of the three lenses that I tend to carry in my backpack when I go out doing landscape photography. For the purpose of this video, we're going to sort of stick to native Z-mount lenses, which is what the Nikon Z-series cameras use. It is their new mounting system. There are several good possibilities for if you're going to use an older F-style mount lens with the FTZ as an adapter. However, for this purpose, I'm going to stick to the Z-series lenses. And one of the reasons for that is as I made the move to mirrorless and tried to get my landscape photography kit all settled in, I gravitated towards the native Z mount lenses whenever I could, partially because I wanted to avoid the adapter, partially because I just wanted to minimize what I had to carry out in the field. And the Z mount lenses are very sharp and have been a, a, a great line of lenses from Nikon. So I've been gravitating towards trying to get all of my kit over to that. Now I do have some older F mount lenses that I use FTZ adapters for, but they are not my regular carries. So because of that, in this video, since I'm focusing on what I regularly take out with me to practice my landscape photography, we'll be focusing in on the Z mount lenses for the Nikon Z series cameras. Now, if you're not a Nikon shooter, still hang out because some of my comments on different focal lengths and why I chose some focal lengths versus another could be pretty interesting, especially when we get to the third lens I carry in my kit. It sort of has a big range of overlap and it'll be interesting to see why I chose to go with that range of overlap instead of trying to separate them out a little bit. So let's get into it. Okay, so first up, we're going to dive into the wide angle side of the world. And for that, I've been using the Nikon 14 to 30 F4 uh, Z mount lens. And it's been a really great lens. It's an affordable point of entry. It's pretty sharp through most of the range, maybe a little bit towards the edges, it gets to touch out. But I think for all uh, purposes, it works out really well. And it's, it's a great lens to go with. This is an F4 lens. So that means your aperture can stay F4 from the 14 millimeter mark all the way to the 30 which is pretty nice. However, landscape photography, most of the time since we're on tripods, really you're probably gonna be in the F8, F11 range anyways. So you don't necessarily need that wide open spot. F4 does just fine on the job. Keeps it pretty light because there's not as much glass and elements to get down into the F2.8 range and makes it super nice and packable. The 14 to 30 is an S series lens from Nikon, which means it does get a little bit more attention to the, the glass inside of it and just mechanics. And so far it's been a really solid lens, definitely fairly often used. And in landscape photography, wide angle lens serves a couple purposes. There's the obvious, you want the grand vistas, you want the mountain ranges, you want, you know, those vista shots. And then there's cases like where if you're photographing waterfalls, you might be in a little close, so you need that wide angle to get the whole picture of the waterfall so you can get, you know, the little cove it's in and the water comes splashing down. So you'll end up using, you know, the wider lens to get that look. And a wide lens can also be great if you're trying to highlight something in the foreground and then something off in the distance. You can bring that foreground in real close still get it wide enough to sort of see the background in it. So you're sort of highlighting this foreground, how it relates to the background. So it's a great, very versatile lens. You know, it's been a good lens to me. Now Nikon also makes a 14 to 24 millimeter lens with an f2.8. And it admittedly is probably slightly higher quality. I haven't actually shot it, but from what I've read online, it's probably a touch sharper. However, since I'm doing so much landscape photography with these and trying to remain budget conscious while still getting a quality product, the 14 to 30 f4 lens really is a, is a great fit due to the way it packs down for travel, you know, budget friendly. And I just, while it might be nice to have a 14 to 24 F 2.8, I think you can get by with a 14 to 30. I've been happy with it with all of my shots. And so it almost always finds its way into my backpack. <laughs> And moving on from there, we move into the 24-70 F4 lens. Again, F4, so it stays F4 from 24 millimeters to 70 millimeters. This particular lens is often available as part of a bundle if you're buying a Nikon Z6 or Z7 or any of their other Z series cameras. It's often one of the options in the kit as a bundle. Uh, makes it even more affordable. F4, so, you know, like we said, stays F4 from 24 to 70. That's awesome. Uh, it is an S-series lens, so it's got that slight more touch of quality to it, a little bit more attention to the glass, a little bit more attention to the optics and things like that. Mine did come with the camera when I bought it. I bought it in a bundle, and it's been a surprisingly great lens. Um, I use it for a lot of landscape, mid-range things. Being from 24 millimeter, you can get just wide enough, and 70 can give you just enough punch that it can really make for a good walk-around lens if you're trying to keep your number of lenses small or looking for a very versatile lens. A 24-70 is pretty versatile. 
Now, of course, that means you can't get super wide because you're limited to 24, and you can't really punch in on a telephoto. But as a mid-range lens, it works really well. So this is a pretty standard carry, and up until I got my third lens, this would be what I would have called my walk-around lens if I could only take one lens out or if I wasn't going to take my backpack with me and I was just going to take my camera on a strap. The 2470 probably would have been what I would have brought because it was versatile enough to let me get lots of different shots. It could even let me, you know, work on some of those more intimate images, a little more close-in, close-up, you know, being able to work with it. So it's a really solid lens, tends to find its way in my pack most of the time. <music> the third lens in my pack is the 24 to 200. It is an f4 to 6.3, so it's a variable aperture lens, which I've talked about in previous videos. Well, what that means is at 24 millimeters, it's f4, but as you start to zoom in, that aperture starts to creep up towards f5.6, f6.3, f so it's variable aperture, so you don't keep that f4 through the whole thing. And as I've commented in other videos, it does sort of start losing the f4 very quickly, and I want to say by the time you're out to like 80 millimeters, you're already at f6.3. However, as I've noted in those videos and earlier in this video, when you're a landscape photographer, you tend to be setting your ISO down to 100 or 64, as low as you can get, and then you're, trying, you're typically using a tripod, and you're trying to get up into those larger apertures, you know, f8, f11, f16, so you get that depth of field you want. So because of that, and the fact you're on a tripod, the 6.3 I don't really see as a limitation. Most of the time when I shoot this 24 to 200, I'm usually in the f8, f11, f16 range. It gets me into the sort of the sharpest part of the aperture anyways, and it doesn't really matter that, that 6.3 is really the minimum I can go because of the nature I'm using it. For landscape photography, I think it makes a good fit. Now, in the sort of the telephoto range, there's a couple other options I could have gone with for this, this side of the, the three lenses that I carry. So I could have gone with the 24 to 120 f4, which would have got me the f4 all the way through the range. And, you know, 24 millimeter at the wide end, that's the same as this. And punching out to 120 is really not too bad. And that is a, a decent lens option. But I didn't go with that one. Another option would have been to do just a 70 to 200 f2.8 or something like that, which would then get me, you know, I'd have my 14 to 30, 24 to 70, and 70 to 200. So very minimal overlap. Whereas here I've got this 24 to 200 which is, has significant overlap, it actually completely overlaps with my 2470. So let's talk about why I did that. So one of the big deciding factors early on before I even started really shooting this lens was just the size of it. I was getting set to travel to the Southwest, I was gonna be flying across country, and the size of this lens is just packed down nice and small, fairly lightweight, didn't take up a lot of room, so it was a really great option from the transportability aspect of things and it got me out to 200 millimeters for a telephoto so it just worked out really well in that I had that whole range in a very small package. Now the other advantage of the 24 to 200 is if I can only take one lens with me it covers that wide range it would give me an option so on times where I'm packing really light and I don't want to take three lenses or and I want to bring it down to two, I can take just this 24 to 200 and I can not have to take my 24 to 70. A little bit of trade-off on the optical quality, just a little bit. I've looked at that in other videos. I don't think it's significant, which is all the more reason this 24 to 200 is just a really versatile lens for that. And because of that versatility, what I've also found is when I'm in bad weather and I want to minimize my lens swaps, and the reason I'd want to minimize those lens swaps is in bad weather, if it's blowing a lot of dust or dirt or it's very wet, when you take that lens off of your camera, you expose the sensor to dirt, water, and things like that. So if you remember way back in January in my snow day video where there's lots of snow, I actually put this 24 to 200 on and I used it the whole trip just so I didn't have to swap lenses. And I could stick with this 24 to 200, not make any lens swaps, but at the same time I had the versatility of being able to go from 24 millimeters to 200 millimeters and not have to make a lens swap. So because of that, I found this lens super, super versatile and very handy from everything from the lightweight compactness of being able to travel with it to the versatility of if I really want to light my load, I can actually drop the 2470 out of my pack and just use the 24 to 200 and cover that whole range. Two, when I'm shooting in poor weather, being able to use the 24 to 200 and minimize any kind of lens swaps I might need to do. I've also found it useful on trips where I've talked about just carrying a camera and a camera strap. If I toss on my 24 to 200, I don't need a whole lot of gear with me and I can get all the shots I need to do with this 24 to 200. Just a super versatile lens, and though I have a lot of overlap with it, I think the versatility it allows me to have for certain trips is well worth it. <laughs> So that sums up the three lenses that I take out with me on almost every trip, 14 to 30, 24 to 70, and the 24 to 200. I find that a very versatile range, 
These are all the, the mid-range lenses. They're not the super fast 2.8 lenses, but to me that lightens the load a little bit, makes them easy to hike around with, and gives me lots of versatility when I'm out in the field. If I was to add a lens, I would seriously consider adding a 100 to 400. Um, I do not have one of those. It is a lens I'm considering and may one day in the future pick up. And if I did that, I would keep my 24 to 200, but might not make the pack quite as often because then I would have my 14 to 30 for my wide, my 24 to 70 for my mid ranges, throw in the 100 to 400, which only gives me a 30 millimeter gap from 70 to 100, but then that 100 to 400 could really get me some of that super zoom in there. So one day I may end up with a 100 to 400 and that would replace what was my standard carry. But even with that said, I don't think I'd be getting rid of this 24 to 200 just because it is super handy on trips where you want a light load or only want to bring one lens with you. I love that flexibility, so I wouldn't be getting rid of that. So those are the three lenses I keep in my landscape photography bag. So far, they've worked out really well for me. I'm really happy with the focal length range I can cover pretty much all the way from 14 to 200. Lots of flexibility, lots of versatility, not too heavy. It's just been a real great setup for me and I really don't have anything to complain about with it. I think the image quality I get from these lenses is great. And so as a Nikon user, I think it's a great set of lenses to head out into the field with. If you're a non-Nikon user, I just think some of the flexibility that you get in those particular focal lengths is worth considering. And trying to cover that range from the wide end all the way up to at least the 200 is a use useful way to go. And that might be what you want to look for as you're selecting your lenses. And don't forget to keep in mind, being how they pack down, how much you can carry, things like that are important considerations along with image quality. So if you found this video helpful, please hit that like button. And if you want to see future landscape photography content from me, don't forget to click that subscribe button so you don't miss anything from me in the future. And thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.